Hey everybody, Mr. Lears here today. Uh, we are going to continue our study of surreal art and we're going to look at a different surreal artist, probably the most famous surreal artist. His name is Salvador Dali. So first take a look at uh, this video about uh, one of his most famous artworks uh, and then we will talk about it after. <laughs> We're here at the Museum of Modern Art, one of my favorite art museums. We are going to get a chance to see some of the most famous works of art. Let's get inside and get started. Follow me. This episode is funded by the Glick Fund and the Crystal DeHaan Family Foundation, who inspire philanthropy and creativity. Uh, we are here in front of what a the underestimated small, smallness of this Dali painting with a Larissa Baylor. Thank you so much for your time. It's a real pleasure, Nate. This is one of my favorite works and I think one of the most popular in MoMA's collection. Yeah, well tell us a little bit about it. I mean, besides the fact that it is way smaller than I expected. I know, isn't it crazy? I joke that every time I come into the gallery it gets smaller and smaller. And you know, part of that is that Salvador Dali is painting on a really miniature scale. He wants to give us this powerful impact with this little work that's painted with the most minute details. Yeah, and so, well, real quick, too, how did the museum get this? This was given in, to the museum in 1934, and that's just three years after it was painted. So this is really at the height of surrealism. And surrealism, of course, is a movement that starts in France in the 1920s and is associated with the visual arts and literature writing. It has to do with dreamscapes and delving into the unconscious, sort of bringing that onto the canvas, if you will. Oh yeah, and so tell us, everybody's gonna wanna know. I, and this has been, he, I've been obsessed with Dali yeah. since, gosh, high school. But why the clocks, the ants, and what is going on in this painting? Exactly, well again, he uses this hyper-realism only to kind of thwart our expectations to get us to really think about it, or maybe not to think at all, to react to it. It's a, it has all kinds of irrational mm. aspects or juxtaposed aspects that we're, we're not expecting. Um, so why the melted watches and what are the ants doing there? Well, hard and soft seem to be really at play in this work and confusing. Um, there are the cliffs of Catechez, where he's from in Catalonia, and those are timeless, right? Geology, it's been there forever, it's permanent, and time itself is supposed to be permanent, right? It's something that we can measure, it's something that we can count on. And one of the things that Dali is playing with is melted watches. We don't expect that. What does that mean if, if time melts or if ants are crawling over something? It's a decay and entropy. Now, this is a rumor, I don't know if it's true, that he would put himself into like a, a self uh, hallucination okay. state to, to paint these kind of things. I mean, how true is that? So, a lot of surrealist artists, again, trying to delve into their unconscious in different ways. That could be waking up from a dream and writing everything down. It could be closing your eyes and drawing and seeing what comes supposedly from your unconscious. Or it could be trying to put yourself into a hypnotic state. And I think that Dali did do that yeah. to try to get to another realm. Where did he learn to become a painter? Like what was any of his background? Did he... So he did go to school. He did study art and he did study mathematics and science and poetry. These were all of great interest to him and read constantly. And eventually he gave this up for um, full-time art making, creating films and paintings, and moved to Paris from Spain. <laughs> wow. During this time, there was a lot going on with Einstein and Freud. I mean, how much do you think was influenced, like all that science going on? Very much. So as I said, he was constantly reading books. We know that he was doing this at university, and he continued that fascination with science, uh, and perhaps anxiety with science uh, throughout his life and career. And Einstein's theory of relativity was very much in the air. Mm. Uh, and one of the things that Dali says about this, about the melted clocks, is that he was inspired by melting camembert cheese oh, in the summertime. But so it's just, it's just I analogy. don't think that's all that's there, and I wouldn't be the first to say that. Mm -hmm. I think this idea of the expandability of time or the fact that time might not be fixed, as Einstein showed, Sigmund Freud as well was very much at the root of surrealism. Yeah, I know he looked up to him quite a lot. He while, did, so. and he eventually met him um, when Sigmund Freud was in his 80s. But that was a, an inspiration for many of these artists who were thinking about dreams and the unconscious and how to 
expose that and, and cultivate it in a new artistic movement. I have to ask, so I have always thought of if, if he had a camera, that he would black belt the selfie. Um, so I, he loved to take pictures of himself. Now, do we see any, is there, I've heard that that might be a self portrait. Yes, so, um, and I love that you bring up photography as well because he's very interested in film and he thought of his paintings like this. They're, they're so realistic, they almost might be, as he called them, hand-painted photographs. It's not a photograph that's painted, but it gives that aesthetic. But to your point of the selfie and the portrait, um, many people have been interpreted, and I think he intended that figure in the middle, that very strange, equally melted, amorphous figure to be a kind of self-portrait. So how strange is that with that sense of illegibility and um, strange melted quality to show himself? So we, we might be able to see him and his face and his nose and his long eyelashes sort of draped over a rock formation with another watch almost looking like a saddle, as if he's somewhat part human and part horse. This has a really big mat and then this frame is really unique. Can you tell me anything about it? Yeah, isn't that interesting? So again, it's it, you know it's almost as big as the picture itself and it is a really unusual frame with the, the velvet matting there and the box. And so this was an original frame, as I understand it, that Dolly created. And I wanna relate this both to his interest in cinema and the kind of idea of looking into a box and, and um, framing films, um, but also kind of designating how one should look at his imagery, sort of constructing the whole thing, being in control of it. That background you mentioned from his hometown of just, which is gorgeous. Um, yeah, I mean, it feels like now that you say it, shadow box, like I'm looking through a window now. Right. Oh, thank you so much for showing this around. Oh, it's such a beautiful piece. You have to come in to really en enjoy the frame. And, that to, frame. and yeah. to look at how small it is. Uh, thank you so much. Click on the right to get yourself some more. Okay, let's take a moment here to look at uh, Salvador Dali's artwork a little bit closer. So let's start by uh, describing what we see, the different things that we see in this picture. Who can unmute and tell me, or type into the chat, uh, you pick, who can unmute and tell me uh, what are some things that you see in this picture? Go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we see uh, we see uh, melting clocks. I see a stopwatch. There's little ants on it. There is a tree growing out of some sort of surface. There's the mountain in the background. There's some sort of platform uh, back here, and this is supposed to be kind of like a almost like a self-portrait where he's laying underneath a blanket, but he's kind of like part horse or something like that. And it looks like dirt. In the desert, maybe some water and a sky. Okay, so let's uh, look at this a little bit closer and who can tell me uh, what are some things that are the same uh, in this picture? Or things that are happening that are the same? Who can unmute or type into the chat? There are uh, similar things going on throughout the picture. Who can tell me? Okay, some of the things that are the same that I see, I see uh, there are one, two, three, three clocks uh, that are the same, and I guess the stopwatch is similar to that. Right. A lot of the surfaces look the same. I don't know if anybody said that. Uh, even though there's a tree branch and a mountain and ground and clocks, everything looks kind of smooth. Okay, who can tell me uh, what are some differences that we see in this artwork? Uh, look, or look around at the different parts of this picture and tell me some things that are different uh, between the different parts of the picture.
An example would be, right, the dirt right here is darker than the dirt over here, All right? Another example would be, okay, the clocks are different, made of different things. This one's brass, this one's silver. These two are pretty similar. Um, this one is a closed stopwatch, so that's different. Okay. So if this was the cover of a book, what do you think this story would be about? If you went to the library and you picked up this book and you didn't read it yet and you had to guess, what would this story be about? Go ahead and unmute and tell me or type into the chat. And this is just a, a guess, a guess, and you can make this up. Use your imagination. Look at the picture, tell me, you know, the details of the picture to try and uh, put together all the clues about what this story would be about. Okay, well, I definitely, uh, in my opinion, if I had to guess about this book, there's definitely something going on with time. Maybe it's like a time travel uh, book because there's definitely like the clocks. Time is supposed to be uh, something that's constant in our lives. I mean, time keeps on ticking, right? But they're not very, uh, the clocks are melting. So that kind of gives me the clue that Maybe that isn't a, a very permanent uh, feeling of time in this picture. So it's, it's almost like time isn't consistent in this book. So there's definitely something going on with time. Um, it's definitely like an eerie type of feeling in this book. Uh, where time is supposed to be a constant in our lives, but this seems very... You know, it's almost like a desert and there's like a loneliness feeling to this. So there's definitely something going on with time in this book. Right? Okay, so uh, this week we're going to start another uh, surreal artwork and much like uh, the artwork we just looked at from Salvador Dali, uh, we are going to uh, focus on the word juxtaposition. Juxtaposition is when you put two things together that don't normally go together, like an orange and a frog. Like if there was a frog that was also half orange and half frog. Okay, that would be a juxtaposition version of surrealism. So this week is all going to be about organizing our thoughts and ideas. And uh, we're going to draw some pictures uh, that will give us some uh, resources for uh, creating our surreal project uh, next week in class. So this week we're going to focus on some different things. And you notice that I have uh, some different emotions on my paper right now. Uh, courageous, excited, fearful, valuable, and trusted. So those are things that I'm going to be drawing uh, for my surreal project. And uh, you don't have to draw, write those words and draw the shapes and everything else. You can just use a piece of paper and know that you have to make uh, five drawings, of five different things that have to relate to these emotions. Uh, so for these drawings, uh, in each space, you're going to draw a symbol or a series of symbols that reflect or tell a story of a moment that you felt the emotion uh, indicated. Think about how that emotion could be represented in a final still life object, a surreal object. Okay, so uh, today, uh, get out your piece of paper and pencil. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and draw a couple of these shapes on your paper. 
uh, so that uh, and write out the words if you want to do that right now. I'll give you a, uh, a moment to do that uh, to get your supplies and to write these words if you want. You don't have to and draw these shapes if you want. You don't have to. Uh, you can just draw in different sections of your paper, front and back, whatever you need to do. Uh, so go ahead and get your supplies ready. We are about to start. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started by, uh, I'm going to start with the excited section. I'm going to zoom in here. Uh, there we go. Oh, just going to move that over. Give me a second here. There we go. Okay. Switch to a pencil. Come on. Okay, perfect. All right, so something that gets me excited, I'm going to draw an object is definitely a delicious piece of pizza. So I am going to draw a piece of pizza here and I'm going to start with the crust over here. And uh, there's the edge of the crust, right? And then the crust is kind of bumpy and goes that way. And then the cheese starts. I'm going to give it some texture here. And then I'm going to draw some cheese. It's kind of drippy cheese and melty and nice and delicious. I'm getting excited thinking about it. Maybe I'll have some pizza today. <laughs> crust over here. So why don't you go ahead and start thinking about uh, an object that makes uh, you excited. I'm going to put some pepperoni on there. Maybe some basil. I'm going to put this on my pizza. A couple pieces of basil. I like mushrooms on my pizza. Mm, mushrooms. And maybe some slices of tomato. Tomato slices are good on pizza. You know, if you want to draw pizza too, I guess that's okay. I'd rather you come up with something else that is exciting for you. Do another slice of pepperoni over there. Yeah, another mushroom. I think I'm gonna shade in the crust over here. Maybe put some texture on that cheese is kind of bubbly. Okay, so there is my drawing of pizza. Why don't you take a moment to uh, start drawing an object for excited. Go ahead and do that now.
Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next one. And the next one that I would like you to draw has to do with being courageous. So if you can think of something, an object that reminds you of having courage. Uh, I did liquid courage, also known as coffee. I did a cup of coffee for my object that reminds me of some of something courageous. Uh, so why don't you take a minute right now and go ahead and start your drawing. You don't have to finish. Start a drawing about something that is courageous to you. Do that now. Okay, so you can see I've added a drawing for uh, something that is fearful for me. You can, hopefully you can uh, think of something of your own uh, that you don't necessarily copy mine. Something fearful for me is uh, definitely a wolf, uh, is definitely scary for me. Uh, so why don't you start your drawing of an object that is causes fear for you as well. Go ahead and do that now. Okay, so you can see that I have drawn uh, my something that is valuable for me, and that is uh, family. So I drew like a little kid holding the dad's hand, but the little hand is so small, it's just holding on to the pinky of the hand. So why don't you start your drawing for something that is valuable to you? Go ahead and do that now. Okay, so you can see that I have drawn my last uh, drawing, which is the trusted uh, section. So somewhere on your paper, start drawing something that uh, you trust. And uh, I drew a picture of my eye because I trust uh, in myself. I, I try, have trust in myself. Uh, so I pick, drew a picture of my eye. Uh, so why don't you take a moment to uh, do that? 
Uh, this is the last part of our drawing for today. Make sure you save this drawing and uh, keep it for next time because we're going to use these drawings to create our surreal picture uh, next week. Uh, Check the position. Okay, so go ahead and start drawing your uh, trusted object now. Go ahead and do that now. Okay, so like I said before, uh, that's it for today. Put your drawing in a safe place and keep it for next time. You will need it for next time. Have a wonderful uh, week and I will see you all next time.